Hello, my name's Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I want to give you uh, some ideas around how to start tracking your marketing campaigns in pipe drive. Because pipe drive is a fantastic tool, it's a sales CRM that lets you track the leads coming into your business, where they are in your sales journey, and then you can report on that later to see your conversion rates, revenue, things like that. And wouldn't it be great if you could pull up a report to show for the different marketing campaigns that we've run, maybe they've been had some campaigns on Facebook or Google, wouldn't it be great to see for those different campaigns what revenue is attributed to each of those. That's what I'm gonna be showing you how to do in this video. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. And if you do want to get one-on-one -on -one help with Pipedrive, setting up your account, automating your sales process, training your team, or connecting different tools like I'm about to show you in this video, then check out the link in the description below to learn more about my Pipedrive consulting and support options. Let's get into this video. And for the purpose of this demo, what I'm gonna do is show you how to connect a simple contact form. So here's one that I've built using JotForm. I'm gonna show you how you can connect that to Pipedrive and track where the traffic to that form is coming from. So this is just an example, but here's like a, yeah, a contact form I might put on my website. You could have, maybe you've got like a landing page for a marketing campaign that you're doing. Um, you could build a simple form using JotForm. As you can see, I've kept it pretty simple. So I'm just asking for somebody's name email and uh, put in a place where they can type a message. Now, what I have down here, and this is the reason I've chosen to use JotForm, is I've got some hidden fields. So if I click on this and show you the properties, if I go to advanced, you'll see I've chosen to hide this field. So I have four fields for UTM source, medium, campaign, and content. And any online marketers watching might be familiar with what this is, but if you're not, what these things are, this, these are UTM parameters that you can attach to a URL. And so what you can do is specify, this, uh, let's say that you have a Facebook ad, you can then um, put some special parameters on a URL linking to your website and say, you know, the traffic clicking this ad is coming from Facebook, which is a social medium. We're doing a uh, campaign for our you know, spring sale and the content is that we've linked them to this particular page. The, if you've got a tool like Google Analytics tracking traffic to your website, it, can, it will then receive these UTM parameters and so in Google Analytics, you can then report on and see where traffic is coming from. And so here is what my form looks like uh, kind of on the front end. I would embed this onto my website or maybe I build a landing page and I, I, I put this form on my landing page. And what I've done up here in the URL is I've included my UTM parameters. So let's say I'm going to link to this form from Facebook. You can see what I've done is I've put a little question mark and then I've put in the name of the hidden field from here, so UTM source. So I've got um, question mark, UTM source equals, and then the name of the source, which is Facebook. I then have, and actually I need a little and symbol there, and UTM medium is social, UTM campaign is, and then I've got the name of my campaign, so let's say we're doing a spring sale, and the UTM content, this is the content that I'm linking to, so let's say this is just landing page A. If I'm testing different versions of a landing page, I could have different content for landing page B. So now when I navigate to this page, uh, although the fields are hidden, these parameters in the URL have pre-filled those fields. So if I just go ahead and fill in my forms, let's just say Paul Miners, Paul at test.com, and I put in my message here, let's go ahead and submit that. Now if I actually go to my um, job form, and if I look at my responses, we can see here, this is the one May 10th, the one that I just submitted. So I've got my message. You can see my uh, UTM source, medium, campaign, and content have all been captured here in the form. And so even though the person clicking the link doesn't see that, we can submit that information through JotForm, uh, which we can then capture and push into Pipedrive. And so that is the next step. And so the way I'm getting that form response into Pipedrive is using a tool like Zapier. So I have videos on my YouTube channel. If this is your first time seeing Zapier, I highly recommend going and checking out my other videos. But I've created a Zap here, which is triggered when, you, when a new job form submission is received. So you can see I'm just triggering from my contact form. What I've then told my Zap to do is find or create a contact or a person in Pipedrive. So using the email, in fact, if I just pull in the fresh data here, let's just pull in the sample that I just submitted. There we go. So I'm telling my Zap in step two, 
using the email address field, go and um, search for that contact in Pipedrive. If you can't find one, create one using the name and email instead. Then in my next step, um, in my next two steps actually, I've got a couple of lookup tables because what I'm going to do in step five is I'm going to create a deal in Pipedrive. Now if I actually just go ahead and show you what the deal a deal looks like, you can see I've actually got custom fields here for my UTM content, campaign, source and medium. Now because what I want to do is pull a report that shows revenue one based on source, in order to do that, I need to set up that source field as a drop down menu like this. So I've got my different source options here. Same with my medium, I've got a few different options here. Um, whereas my campaign, I've set up as a text field because that's something that's gonna change quite a lot. Maybe my sources, um, and that's really what I want to report on, I'm generally only linking from a, a few sources. So because I have that as a drop down menu, what you need to do is use a lookup table in Zapier to map to uh, the dropdown field in Pipedrive. So this is a bit like a, um, it's a bit like doing a VLOOKUP in Excel. And I do have a video on this on my YouTube channel. If you've never created a lookup table in Zapier before, check out the other video on my channel. But basically what this step is doing is it's taking this key, which is the UTM source, Facebook, it's then looking in this list on the left to try and see if there's a match. So it's going to look down the list and go, yes, we found this word Facebook here and they match. And it's going to return this number on the right hand side, which is the number 59. And that number corresponds to the ID for the drop down menu uh, for that Facebook value in my field. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So if I go to my create deal step in this final step, I'm creating a deal with the contacts name. I am then down here at the bottom, I'm submitting all of my UTM tracking information. Now, if I just uh, remove the source for a sec, you can see here, these are the three options from my drop-down menu. Now, I don't want to choose the, word, the Facebook option because that's gonna set it to Facebook every time. So um, what I have to do is use a custom field and that's where I'm gonna reference the output from my lookup table. And you can see there the number 59, that is the ID from, from uh, the ID of this Facebook option in Pipedrive. So that's how I knew uh, what numbers to put here in my lookup tables. These are the IDs for each of those values. And so now um, I can say, right, instead of mapping to Facebook, we're gonna use a custom value and I'm gonna map to whatever the output of that previous step is, that's what's going to go into here. So all this results in something like this. So let's just go ahead and test this action. Zappy is now gonna send this data through to Pipedrive and if I go to my deals, we should see, here's a new deal, Paul Miners, and here are all my UTM parameters. So the source was captured as Facebook, it's a social medium, spring sale, and landing page A. So brilliant. Uh, that's kind of step two, which is getting the information into Pipedrive. And now the third step, how do I report on this? So that's quite easy. I'm just gonna go to my insights tab. Now this does require you to be on Pipedrive's professional plan because I'm going to do some custom reporting here. So here I've created this report. Let's look at this year and actually what I should do first is let's just go ahead and win that deal. So let's just put a value on this. So I've gone and won the deal. Now when I go to my reports and so here's my report updated now. You can see it's showing deals won this year. The y-axis is showing my deal value. Uh, the x-axis is showing deals won over time by month, and I've segmented by UTM source, which is that drop-down menu, and you can see my legend, the orange here, is the Facebook values. So I've got this $1,000 won in May, which is the deal that I just won. Now, with this report, to be able to report like this, it does require us to use a drop-down menu. When I set up the UTM source field, I had to set that up as a single option drop-down if I just had that as a text field, like I did with the UTM campaign, I wouldn't be able to report like this. So if you are wanting to generate reports in this way, you will have to be uh, careful to set up your, those custom fields as drop down menus. If I wanted to do any further analysis, or if I did want to set them up as text fields, I could still do some reporting, but I would have to do that outside of Pipedrive. I would export my deal data into a spreadsheet and I could generate pivot tables in Excel, and I could then look at UTM sources and campaigns 
campaigns uh, and look at all that text data if I, if I did choose to use text fields. And so I can just add this to my dashboard now and then it means as I am driving traffic to my landing page and including my UTM parameters in my URLs, I can work out which of my paid campaigns or my social campaigns are driving the most, uh, the best results in terms of signups on my website. So I think this is a really great way of um, very accurately being able to track in Pipedrive where deals and revenue are coming from and, and what was the originating source. So if you have a marketing team that's wanting to capture that data, this is a really good method for doing that. If you have any questions about this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.